Now let's just have the same income and double it up to being married with the same 100,000 income. So now we're at married filing joint here and we have another a spouse. So uh, Mr. Anderson got married, which is nice. And so now we can scroll down and say, we got the same 100,000. So note when getting married, it's, it's possible that the incomes could likely double or something like that, or at least go up, but it's not uh, required that that would be the case. So let's just keep it at the same 100,000 for now. And then the standard deduction doubles which is kind of what you would expect to happen because again, you don't want to disincentivize marriage. Marriage is usually going to be a benefit for the tax codes because of the, the, the fact that they're trying to uh, accommodate it as if the two people got together and they had, they both had the same amount of income, right? You don't expect to make the same amount of money. You double the income because then they basically double the standard deduction and they have uh, similar kind of adjustments to the actual tax count calculation tables but again if you're on the low income side of things the tax code can actually disincentivize marriage by not allowing some of the things that you might get like with the refundable credits like the earned income tax credit and the child tax credit can get kind of messy you, can, you could imagine situations where uh it doesn't turn out to be a benefit so in any case if i go back to the equation here all that's happening is now i'm up in the married filing joint to the 25.9. So there's the 25.9 getting us to that 74.1. So the 74.1 on page one is here. And then on page two, the tax calculation is now lower because one, the tax is lower, but also two, we're using different tables for married instead of single. So eight, eight, four, Eight four, uh, eight, four, 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 right? That would be that. Now you can imagine a situation that if they got married, then the income would double. Again, it's probably not likely that you're gonna, you know, that it would double. I mean, maybe, I mean, but, but usually one spouse ha earns more than the other. I'm not gonna get into who earns more or whatnot. And it's might be likely that after marriage, one of the spouses is gonna take time you know with kids which means they're not gonna be able to work as much you would think but let's say that it doubled here to double you to two and say we had one hundred thousand and and do that so if i go back on over now we've got a two hundred thousand because now we have two people combined in the married uh, tax return the twenty five thousand nine hundred that gets us to the 174 100 if i mirror that on my on my little worksheet i'm going to say this is w to employer 2 100,000 and we'll pull that back onto the first page for 200,000 that gets us to the 174 100 and so 174 100 and then on page 2 the tax is now 29 5 uh, 36 so 29 29,536. So there we have that. So again, the key points you just want to remember if I if you go from married to uh, single to married is you're going to say, okay, well, if 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 they're single, you've got the 12,950. If they were to get married, you're going to double the standard deduction generally. But you have to also consider the fact that you could possibly have two incomes that are coming together or you can just think of if you're looking at a married couple that it would be the standard deduction 12,950 times 2, uh, 25,900 and there's usually also going to be an impact on the tax calculations because the whole progressive tax tables will have to change uh, for married couple versus single.